Thank you very much for um, coming today. Two very close and long um, valued friends, uh, and it's a pleasure for me to introduce them. I won't go into a lot of background. They'll be here afterwards for those who can, who can stay. But our first guest is, uh, is Dr. Karen Ross, uh, born and raised in Kenya, um, lived in the Okavango for 20 years under canvas, raised her daughter under canvas. Uh, she wrote the script for the BBC uh, uh, sh three part film uh, called Akabango Jewel of the Kalahari. Please welcome our friend Karen Ross. Great. Th thank you very much, Vance, for that introduction. And, well, first of all, a big thank you very much for all coming here for, for these talks and to David Barron and his incredible staff for this wonderful opportunity and, of course, Maggie Bryant for bringing me over here and Vance Martin, President of Wild, for, for making it happen as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about the Okavango Delta. Um, as David said, you, you saw the BBC visuals earlier and he got me so worried last night that I stayed up all night taking out the graphs for my presentation, so... <laughs> But anyway, what is, for those of you who have not been to um, the Okavango, it is situated in southern Africa and it's part of the third largest river system in that region. Um, and this is a very arid sub-region, so water here is important both to people and to wildlife. It's, it's critical. But what makes this such a challenging area, we're talking about politics and policy, is what I would call the political geography of this river system, which rises in southern Angola, in the highlands of southern Angola, flows through Namibia and enters Botswana, where instead of um, channeling through the Zambezi as it used to into the, into the um, Indian Ocean, it now creates an inland delta, and you can actually just see the outlines of it from the satellite image. But this makes a very uh, challenging long-term conservation issue for this wetland, but in particular the Okavango Delta because that's at the lower end of the system. So whatever happens in Angola or Namibia is going to impact this incredible natural region which carries the largest population of elephants left on the planet. You chose the buffalo and the big cats. It's such a remarkable African wetland that the, 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 the lines there actually swim from island to island, which is a unique adaptation, and swamp antelopes, like the Sitatunga and the Lechwe, and also the, the other creatures, small but important. And I haven't got a picture here, but of course the people. There are 100,000 indigenous people who live along the river system, and it's critical for, for them. Um, water is what drives the system. You can see the difference between the size of it in, in arid cycles and in wet cycles. So this continual flow of water down from Angola is critical to the whole well-being of the ecosystem. And it's almost an, a miraculous event because the rainwater that falls in Angola takes about six months to flow through the whole system and it arrives in the lower reaches of the Okavanga Delta in the middle of the dry season, which is when it's most needed and it, it floods this huge acreage, it's about 16,000 square kilometers of wetland, a real oasis in Africa. There have been many threats in the past to this region and most of them center around water, not all of them. I'm just gonna run you through a few and these are where the concerns for future um, threats to the system would be. For instance, in the grips of drought, Namibia announced that it wanted to pipe water from the Okavango River to de deliver it into this infamous canal, which also win winds of 300 kilometers through the desert to the capital of Windhoek. You can imagine the huge evaporation loss from the system, and it was also called a ca killer canal because wild animals would fall into this canal and not be able to get out. Well, fortunately, NGOs um, such as Conservation International worked with 
local um, hydrogeology experts and water experts and actually found out that Namibia had enough water. So that this didn't have to be a confrontational thing. Once again, it was an educational research exercise that just informed policy makers that there were alternatives and there were less expensive alternatives. So that project got stopped. Now there's another one um, uh, uh, to erect a hydroelectric power dam. Now this is critical because sedimentation in deltas is very, very important and this will impact the sediment flow. But it's difficult in these times of um, fuel, escalating fuel costs and the need for energy and um, I'm sure you've all read about South Africa's current energy crisis. So very difficult issues and final, finally a very um, thorny issue in Botswana which is the erection of these veterinary cattle fences in and around the, ecos the natural ecosystems. You can see this uh, diagram of the Okavango. The red lines all represent cattle fences that have gone up in the last 10 years. These fences are like uh, the equivalent of long lines in the ocean. They cut up wilderness areas. They cut away uh, migration routes. Um, this is one in the border between Namibia and Botswana, and it interrupted a major elephant migration. Fortunately, in this occasion, we were able to uh, work with the Botswana <coughs> government, who peeled away a, a very critical 50-kilometer strip on that far, um, it will be your right-hand side of the screen. And all those little brown dots represent elephant movements. So that shows really the, how crucial these wildlife corridors all are to maintain these natural systems. And the, the, the impact of fences are not just cutting up the wilderness, but they are you know, animal rights issues virtually because they snare and, and kill and maim. Um, it's an issue in Botswana that we're working on at the moment with other organizations, um, non-for-profit and civil society organizations, because there is imbalance now, a way forward with Botswana. Are they going to take down fences, as is suggested in an environment impact study on the lower right-hand side, which opens up corridors? Or are they going to favor the, the cattle lobby and really fence out? the Okavango, which will have long-term impacts on the ecosystem and, and affect important developments such as the development of peace parks or transfrontier parks. There's a very, very exciting new initiative taking place in that region and it involves the five countries of Botswana, Namibia, Angola, Zambia and Zimbabwe, which are all represented on that map. And the idea is to do away with with sovereign boundaries for the purpose of conservation. I mean, the, the sovereign boundaries would exist, but in terms of an ecosystem, it's really to try and link up those green protected areas to create one large transfrontier trans frontier protected area, which would be a great tool for tourism, um, community de development, community natural resource development. And once again, you can see the vulner vulnerability of the Okavanga Delta which actually lies outside any sort of serious protected area zone, and in particular the, the panhandle, which is like the main artery of the delta, that this is the, the juggler of the delta, and it's lying completely in unprotected country. So these are big issues to think about, and new developments such as Angola coming into peace, there's, a, there's going to be a rapid period of development going on there, and this river system needs to have better protection. There are various mechanisms available. It already is a Ramsar site. We're hoping that it can be a made a world heritage site. And um, also now, this would be supported by the development of an Okavango River Basin Commission, which is beginning to take place. And there are also some major um, global environmental fund interests, US aid interests in the region. But as these grow and develop, we think that it's very important for small groups, NGOs and civil society to remain engaged and involved in this area that's critical for water, regional security and biodiversity. Thank you very much.